I'm going to tell you 12 habits graphic designers need to break and we start right now. What is going on? My name is Dennis, helping you build your graphic design skills. If learning graphic design and making creative designs suits your interest, consider subscribing and turn on the bell so you get notified when I upload new videos like this. So there are habits some graphic designers exhibit and they think it doesn't matter, but it doesn't matter matters a lot. These habits may be damaging your reputations and career, and yet you keep procrastinating and making new year resolutions to start a new lifestyle every new year. You know, being a graphic designer has never been easy. Working with clients, creative directors and marketing managers and even other designers can take lots of your patience and passion. Whether you work as a freelance designer or in a firm, avoid this habit. I've been a victim of this habit and I'm going to tell you how I was able to break out. You can do the exact same thing so let's jump right in this happens when a designer is not so organized especially when you are working with a team or working on a large volume of projects good naming is the key to fast navigation in materials tracking changes and improve in product team communication most designers are used to saving their projects as new and next advancement will be new final and new final final and so on as far as the projects keep going on and on this habit is such a naming hell my best approach to naming files is considering the keywords about the project take for example if you are working on a pepsi logo redesign and your client's name is john also you are working on this project during the month of April, on the 19th day of April. What I do is, I name the project John Pepsi Logo Design, April 19th. Then I save the project in a folder I created for the month of April 2021. So that is to say, you create folders for every month and every year. You might say the name is too long but i will tell you the reason why i opt for this keyword most clients do return for a project after a year or two and we want to work on the project again and by this time you may not remember the main project itself but at least you can remember some keywords about the project like the person's name the john the Pepsi logo design or even the month you were able to design the job so you can easily search for it on the particular folder if you can remember the month you did the project and if you can't remember the month at all you can search on your yearly folder and definitely you will find the project this process is very easy and it makes you an organized graphic designer one of the worst habits a designer can stick to is jumping into designing without planning out the project either in the form of sketching mock-ups, wireframe or prototype. Some designers may say they are trying to save time or to meet up the expectations of their clients who are always on the rush. But again, it's totally a wrong approach. Plan out your project ranging from sketching out how the project should look like or resources you need for the project and if possible, you create mood boards and this is for professional designers who always want to know how their client feels or who always want to be on the same page with their client. Have you ever wondered why the best paid designers aren't always the best designers? That's because of one of the worst habits in the industry and that is not spending time to market yourself. Believe it or leave it, we live in a world where only the hardworking get rewarded and that is when you market yourself. There are so many approaches to doing this ranging from starting a blog or making social media work for you and better still you sign up to freelance websites where you can work and get paid. Example Fiverr and Upwork. For me, I have made social media work for me and you can do the exact same thing. Now there is no one best method, it's just a matter of trying 
uh, different things and see what works for you. One of the worst habits a designer can have is underestimating your worth and charging less than you should. Graphic design is a well-paid profession unless you are a newbie. If you are feeling poor, it probably means you are undercharging. The reason why freelance designers do undercharge is lack of confidence and fear of scaring off clients. If you are like that, then you should be aware that certain clients are more likely to associate low rate with low quality. Although you should be aware that good designers are hard to find and strongly in demand. So while some clients will try to get away with paying you low rate, don't assume that's your work. In the nutshell, have a standard price for all your design services you offer and stand by it. I admit the fact that designers are wonderful. We make cool things and we amaze people with our skills and we put smiles on our clients face. And still, no one likes a show up. Someone who brags or thinks they are better than everyone else. Never opt to be that guy. Designers are of different personalities so never think you are better than any other person or you are right because you have years of experience always be open for new ideas and new trends accept change with humility hear other people out and take time to appreciate the differences in the way they work question of the day name the habits you have found the most difficult to fit and how you were able to break out from it let's know down the comment there are lots of designers who have been ripped off because they let a client become more than just a client. There is no big deal to take a client out for lunch to discuss the progress of a project, but it gets bad when it's getting too friendly. At this point, turning down a request for low price is awfully difficult when it comes to someone you hang out with every week. So avoid getting too familiar with your client. When I first started graphic design and even till now, what keeps me going is learning from my past mistakes. If something happens to your business, try to evaluate the situation and determine what you should have done better. If you lost a client for some reason, try to determine how to avoid losing clients the same way. If you haven't been paid for a finished project, try to reevaluate your payment structure so you won't face this challenge again. Refusing to learn from your mistake, either out of stubbornness or arrogance, is a quick way to kill your career. Copying other people's design can be so tempting, especially when a client comes with a design idea they love and they want you to do the exact same thing. Overcoming this temptation of copying a designer's job in order to please your client can be so difficult. Instead, I suggest you meet the client and discuss about the design they like. Once you can determine what makes your client love that particular design, then you can create something that meets their satisfaction. Once you can determine that thing that makes your client love a particular design, then you can create something that meets their expectation without infringing on another designer's copyright. Deliberately copying other designers' ideas can kill your creative mind and business. So avoid this like hell. Most designers think asking for extra time to fine-tune their project will make them lose clients. Never forget you are what you design. Whatever you deliver to your client is what your client rates you are. So never deliver a bad design due to deadline. Always seek for extra time to complete any project you think is not concluded. Most times, comparing yourself with others can bring lack of self-esteem and negativity. And it's never a productive or positive thing to do. When we compare ourselves with others, we look at their strengths and we focus on our weakness or we focus on the achievement and focus on our lack of achievement this is not a fair comparison and will often lead to doubt 
and loss of self-confidence. For some people, if they compare themselves with others, it often comes from lack of self-esteem. To start understanding why you are comparing yourself with others, it is when you start assessing how you feel about yourself and how much self-confidence you have. If you find out that you don't have enough self-esteem, then this may be the reason why you are comparing yourself with other graphic designers. So try to focus on your self-worth and confidence. Work on yourself and your skills and not on other designers around you. Try to be the best version of yourself and not trying to be the best version of someone else. I once felt that way when I first started graphic design. Whenever I see other graphic designers making stunning designs, I felt like I can never get there. But when I started working on myself, I was seeing myself going even higher than my expectations. So you can do the same thing. Appreciate what you have. Recognize that you are incomparable and always compete with yourself and focus on your progress. Getting attached to a particular design concept is a very bad habit. It limits your creativity and ties you down to one design concept. Most times you have to take a break when you are obsessed with a design project. Review your ideas and try doing something better than before. Fraser Davidson said, it's very easy to base ideas within the bounds of your technical knowledge. Never try to stay at your comfort zone because you feel your skills are limited. For me, I have learned the hard way and I try to do things the hard way and not looking for possible ways or easy ways to jump over your challenges. Get out of your comfort zone and embrace the hard way and you'll see yourself flying even higher than Ego. Explore new ideas and new techniques to work on things and most especially work on your skills. Share this video with 10 designers with the hashtag avoid this habit and grow. Don't be the only beneficiary of this video. Leave a like, leave a comment and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you very much for watching this video. I'll see you next time.